My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. While Jesus was speaking, says the Gospel of today's Mass, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breasts at which you nursed. And it is so funny, Jesus, to see the sin. You were probably in the midst of a parable, one of your best ones, maybe the prodigal son or, you know, the lost sheep. And that woman couldn't contain her joy and said, man, your mother must have been awesome. Because you tell such a good stories. And I think that it gives me a lot of uh, peace to see normal people praying Jesus. Sometimes I think that my prayer has to be complicated. Or I need to do like a weird things in my prayer. And prayer is just a dialogue. And maybe today in this feast day of Our Lady of the Pillar, I want to ask your mother to teach me how to pray. Mary. You were in the same house with Jesus for years. You saw him growing up. You had dinner thousands of times with him and with St. Joseph. You acted normally all the time. You didn't talk about the temple or the Torah at dinner. You were talking about you know, the games that Jesus played with his friends, the neighbors, the weather, the plans for the weekend. And Jesus would listen and tell his opinion and you would listen as well and say, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And this is prayer, a dialogue with God. And Mary, I want to understand this well. I want to actually ask you to be introduced into your home. This is what Pope Francis was saying recently. He was visiting one of the churches dedicated to Mary in one of his pilgrimages. And then he said, when the church looks for Jesus, when the church, the Catholic church, the Catholics are looking for Jesus, the church always knocked at his mother's door. I too come here today to knock on the door of the house of Mary. And once inside the house, you, my mother, would tell me, just talk with your words. Just look at Jesus into his eyes. Open up, as you would do with a friend. And one of the most important things that you would tell me, my mother, is not to hide. You cannot hide. We cannot hide behind other people's prayer. Maybe you like reading St. Teresa of Lisieux, Pope Francis, St. Jose Maria, and you think, well, I would like to pray like them. And Mary will tell you, no, you pray with your words. Jesus is not interested in your prayer. Jesus, my son, is interested in you, in what you have to say, and in the way that you want to say it. And this is the most important lesson for my prayer. There is a personal encounter with someone that loves me, no matter what. And this is what Mary can teach us today. Mary, help me to have a simplicity of heart, like the woman that we see in the Gospel, saying something just from you know, a spontaneous heart to Jesus. Speaking about personal prayer, I had a recent experience in the place where I work. We have a chapel, and uh, every day someone puts uh, in a jar, like uh, some flowers, in front of an image of Our Lady. And uh, I don't know why I kept putting it in the middle in front of Our Lady, like I thought it was the center of attention of Our Lady's eyes to see the flowers, but someone was moving it to their left. And I didn't know who, but uh, every day in the evening, when I was about to abandon the place, the, the jar was moved to the left, and I put it back in the middle. And the following morning, then it started normally, and halfway through the day, again, it was moved, and I was curious. And I thought, who's, who's moving this? What's the point of putting it into the left? 
and I didn't get it. But uh, sure enough, a few hours later, I was praying there, and I saw one of the dads, huge guy. And uh, he was praying with me, I mean, with other people in the chapel. And when he was leaving, he knelt down, saying goodbye to Jesus, to you, my Lord, in the Eucharist. And then he went to kiss the image. And the guy, the guy was so big that he needed to put aside the flowers in order to get to you, my mother. And I thought, that's awesome. That is so cool. That a big fellow doesn't hesitate to kiss you in public and to show affection. And this is what we need to understand today, Jesus. That uh, in my prayer, there is a personal encounter. Mary can teach me how to pray, as she taught you how to pray. To me, it's kind of funny to think that uh, when you were a baby, my Lord, as any normal baby, you would learn the first words from your mother. And the mothers usually say Papa instead of Mama to their kids. And you, being uh, maybe some months old, you would start saying in Hebrew, Abba, 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 Abba. And Mary was laughing at you. But the funny thing is that later, when you were preaching to the apostles and they came to you and said, Hey, Master, can you teach us how to pray? The first word that you would say was Abba. You said, when you pray, said, Father. And you taught us the Our Father. And that word, Abba, was, you know, put into your heart by Mary. And later on, when you were in the most decisive moment in human history, when you were about to start your passion, your cross, and your resurrection, you were praying in the garden, and the words that came to your lips were the same. Abba, Abba, Father. And I'm pretty sure that you were remembering, you were in your memories, kind of like going back to that moment when you learned it from the first time from your mom. And he gave you peace, Jesus. Those simple words. So teach me how to pray, my mother. As you did today, many years ago, to the Apostle St. James. The tradition says that uh, St. James went to Hispania and uh, at Zaragoza, he was very discouraged. And Mary, being still in this world, performed one of the most amazing miracles in human history, which is to, to move from Jerusalem or from Ephesus. The tradition doesn't know exactly where from. But the fact is that Mary appeared to him at the pillar in Zaragoza. And I don't know what kind of prayer were they saying or, or if they talk and then you just uh, encourage him talking about the future saints that would come from that country or whatever. But I'm pretty sure that sooner or later, or maybe at the end of your conversation, you would say, hey, why don't we pray the prayer that my son taught you? Why don't we pray together the Our Father? And then I will go back to Jerusalem and you can stay here changing the world. And it would be so awesome to have a video of that moment. Both of you, St. James and you, my mother, kneeling down and saying, Abba, our Father who art in heaven, your name must be blessed, your kingdom should come here, give us our daily bread and forgive us. And, and then you would leave that place. But in the heart of St. James, there was peace. There was a reason to continue. And there was hope. Everything comes into this world through your hands. Jesus Christ through your immaculate womb. The salvation of human race, the turning point of history, through you, my mother, through your fiat. And it is fitting that the God keeps that door open. The channel that uh, is your heart still, you know, clean and pouring into the world graces to save people, to encourage people like me. So my mother, thank you very much for being so faithful. Thank you for being so available. Thank you for your simplicity. Thank you for your 
heart and thank you for your eye always looking at me, looking at us. Thank you for being my mother and thank you for being such a good teacher about prayer. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.